See, when Jesus was born with Thomas, he was not just doing things, he was doing things to teach, for learning, so that in future Thomas can apply knowledge. Jesus is engaging a woman who has touched him. And Jesus is engaging who has touched him. We wonder why does Jesus ask this question? He is teaching Thomas that there is something uh, to do when you can believe. Thomas is there, is listening, asking Jesus, Are you crazy? There are so many people. How can you ask who has touched him? Now, there is another woman who comes up. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus says, uh, Woman, your faith has healed you. Yeah. What it means is that uh, there was a woman confronted with a difficult situation. She refuses that I'm dead. She says, I'm going to be alive. She spends a bit of money from her uh, savings. From the checking account, she spent all the money. Now, let me tell you, she did not have the consultation part to ask people what to do. Because they would have told her, hey, you've spent too much money. Just fix to that. Leave this money for your children. Leave this money for your grandchildren. Don't continue to spend money on doctors. Why don't you just stop it? Quit and die, save the little money. She was not going to take none of it. She had a set of truth. She was confronted with a deadly disease. It could, it could not be cured. But she kept on keeping on until she came to the presence of Jesus. Thomas saw it with his eyes. How someone else confronted with a difficult situation can continue to strive on and moving on, and moving on. But Thomas has forgotten. My question to you is this. Can we teach someone how to believe? Can we teach anyone how to believe? I want to suggest that it is very hard. This morning, therefore, what are you doing, Pastor? I've come to talk to believers. I've come to talk to people who already believe. So that they can continue believing and believing and believing. It doesn't matter what your circumstances is saying. It does not matter what your current situation is saying. There was another story Thomas saw with his own eyes. What was the story? There were a group of four men who brought a paralyzed friend. The friend believed that the friends could uh, take him wherever they wanted to take him. They said, son, uh, friend, we're going to take you up the roof. We're going to tear up the roof and we're going to drop you. See, this guy would have said, no, 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 not me. Me on the roof? No, I would rather be uh, uh, paralyzed and alive. You guys want to kill me. I don't want to be lifted up the roof. The people are saying, look, we know someone who can change your situation. We know someone, his name is Jesus. Now, these four friends came, tore up the roof, lowered the friend yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. Thomas is there. Thomas is watching with his eyes. Yeah. What does Jesus say? Jesus says to the four, what great faith. Mm. He begins to uh, command the four friends. We have a choice, friends, to, to hang out with people who have no faith in their heart, who cannot believe, who are always pulling us down, who are always full of negativity. Everything that they see is a problem. But these friends come, they drop Jesus. Jesus stops the preaching. Jesus stops because the house was packed. You couldn't come through the door. You see, he begins to say, well, ha, ha, ha. Uh, talking to the guy who is paralyzed right from uh, birth. He does not say arise. He says your sins are forgiven. Now, once Jesus begins to say that, the people who are hearing Jesus begin to question in their heart. Is Jesus crazy? Are you God to forgive sin? 
And then he says, hey, wait a moment. You people who are busy writing notes uh, and asking me questions, uh, is it, what is easier uh, to say your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, what, what do you do when it is uh, very hard to believe? Everybody, the atmosphere is now static. Everybody is quiet, trying to see what's going to happen. This person has not been walking for a long time. This person, uh, since he was born, we all know, those of you who have gone to surgery, whether it's a knee surgery, uh, hip surgery, you, you have to go for physiotherapy. Yeah. Well, you, you, you must take several months to heal. Yeah. Now, if you have never walked since you were born, uh, everybody is watching. Mm. What do you do when it is hard? Yeah. When it is difficult to believe? Thomas is there. Now, watch, watch this. He says, Son, rise, take out your mat, and go. Oh. <laughs> now, suddenly we know what happened. He rises. Uh, he was, whether it was a basket, I don't know, he rises, grabs it up, walks one foot after another. This defies the logic. Yeah. Science cannot explain it. Mm. If there was surgery, if no physiotherapy, nothing, nothing, no rubbing of arms, stretching yeah. of muscles, just suddenly, yeah. I like that word in the Bible, it says that suddenly, yeah. ah, we, we must believe. Mm. See, when we are confronted with these situations, uh, then God is saying, only believe. Yeah. Jesus was training the people. Now, if you are people of faith, you must have faith in your heart. Your circumstances will tell you you are dead and you are dead, you are dying tomorrow. But you must say, no, no, no. Jesus has the final say. Yeah. You must keep on fighting. You must keep on persevering. Yeah. Thomas was there when uh, Jesus taught them how to believe. The people have spent the whole day. Now it's time for them to go away. We don't want to mess with them. We can't feed them. We would need tons of food and empty all the food in Walmart. Tell them to go away. We cannot feed them. And Jesus turns and says, No, you take care of the problem. Yeah. Go solve the problem. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do yeah. when you are confronted mm. with difficult circumstances? See, we are people of faith. Yeah. We have been made to be ambassadors of Christ. When the people are looking for God, when the people who are hungry for God, when they want to know about God, they ought to come and visit with Brother Wilbur Johnson. Or oh, Sister Dot uh, Collins. Or oh, Sister Wesley right here uh, in front of me. Now, notice this. The Bible says, greater is he in us yeah. than he in the world. In the world. Yeah. Yeah. Greater is the one inside us than the one outside the world. But what does that mean? Uh, friends, it, it, it is up to us to walk around knowing with the big God inside us. It is not about what I can do. It is not about what so and so can do, but it's about what my God yeah. can do. When we dig deeper, when we go in there, we begin to realize that God makes a way where there is no way. Thomas was there. Can I tell you of uh, this scripture? This scripture is very blessed. Uh, yes, yes. Mark nine fourteen. 
when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and some scribes were arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe, and the men uh, ran forward to greet him. He asked them, This is Jesus talking, What are you arguing with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son. He is the spirit that makes him unable to speak. Let me keep on reading this. Whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down and he foams and he grinds his teeth and he becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered to them, You faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. So you must understand what's going on here. Jesus is sick and tired of being sick and tired of a people with the problem of believing. Someone brings a child with a problem. Uh, they say, well, you are the disciples of Jesus. If Jesus can fix this, you the disciples, you ought to fix it. But the disciples, they looked at the complexity of the problem. They could not believe in their heart that God can do it. Therefore, the problem did not go away. And the disciples, you know, the people who need help were saying, you are good for nothing. Why can't you fix this? What is your problem? Then there was a back and forth. We are not God. This is Jesus. We, we, we are human beings. Leave us alone. Wait for Jesus. But when Jesus comes, Thomas is there. Jesus is expecting the disciples to have faith. Jesus is saying greater things than these shall you do when I go away. Yeah. Now, uh, the Bible says, Jesus calls the Father, I say, bring the Son. The Son comes. When the Son comes to Jesus, the Bible tells us that uh, suddenly the Spirit manifests. Roll the, boy, the boy begins to roll on the ground, biting his tongue. And you name it. Jesus asks the question. How long has this been going on? Yes. And the father says, for as long as he was born. Uh, this was happening. Uh, and, and, and listen to what the father says. I want to read that. The father says, oh yes. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us. And help us if you are able. Jesus says, If you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried, I believe. Help my unbelief. What do you do when you come across things that are mind boggling? Things that don't make sense. Things that happen. This story here, it, it is telling us that uh, uh, Jesus begins to command the spirit immediately and all of a sudden the spirit of infirmity goes away and the boy is healed. The disciples are embarrassed. They ask a the question. Why couldn't we cast out this spirit? Why, why couldn't we have a hand on it? Jesus says this kind of demands prayer and fast. Now my friends, I will go on and on and on. As the children of God, we must move. As we move, we must make a determination within our heart. Because faith and believing it is something that is deep down in our heart. No one can put this faith in our heart. It is how we can operate in our mind that a greater is He, the one inside. Whenever there is a relationship, there is, I want to call it a power relationship. 
parents who are here understand what it means to be a power relationship. If, if, if mothers are raising up children, children want to test their boundaries. How far can I go? What, how much can I push the boundaries? Uh, fathers are very, very clear. Uh, if sons just want to go on movie nights and they just want to go out on hotels uh, and they just want to sneak some other boyfriends in the house and they're not paying the bills, uh, father says, it's time for you to get out and be on your own. What am I talking about? Whenever you enter in a relationship, it is about her. Uh, the question now I'm asking you is this. We are, you are either of the two things. Either you are the paralyzed one or the one bringing someone who is paralyzed to Jesus. Who are you this morning? Either you are the paralyzed one. In which case, you want a small group. You want people uh, who can help you bring you to Jesus. Or uh, you are the one who is busy helping other people uh, with very difficult circumstances in their life. And you must remember, friends, that uh, before God can deal with our physical circumstances, with what is prevailing before us, God will always want to make right with God. He says, your sins are forgiven. When sins are forgiven, then what it means is that uh, we are now in the right attitude to connect with God. We are now in the right attitude to begin, for God to begin to deal with our circumstances. Friends, uh, as I come to the close of my message, uh, only believe. All things are possible. Uh, only believe because uh, everything is possible. It starts in the mind. Thomas is demanding to handle the wounds of Jesus because he finds it impossible for someone who is dead and buried to resurrect. Resurrection power it, it is the power uh, that makes things which are impossible to become possible. Resurrection power was there, Thomas saw it, uh, but I wonder whether he believed what he was seeing. Now he is demanding a sign, he is demanding to touch, he is demanding to see. But God says, blessed are those who believe without seeing you, Thomas, uh, touch. Uh, yes, there is, my, there is a scar. Uh, touch my side here. And then he cries out, My God, uh, my God. Fortunately, uh, I want to believe that uh, Thomas has stopped uh, by focusing on the circumstances. Thomas stopped uh, by looking the idea that I don't have money in my pocket. Thomas stopped the idea uh, that I don't have this gift and I don't have that other gift. He began to focus. What does the Lord require of me? What does God want me to do? Uh, they, they we are. When Hagar with a little baby in the desert, they were about to die. And the little son cried out to God. And the Bible tells us that yes, God had from heaven uh, sent out an angel to Hagar and Ishmael out in the desert. After Sarai kicked them out of the desert, God provided water in the middle of the desert. Friends, we are in very difficult times. I trust we all are experiencing problems. And we are wondering where is the solution? Where is our God? I just come by to say, greater is He in us than the one in the world. Never mind what problems are surrounding you, your finances, your health. I don't mind whatever it is. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. Someday, in this fullness of time, God will show up. In the fullness of time, God makes a way yeah. where there is no way. Yeah. In the fullness of time, yeah. in the fullness of time, Friends, this is the essence of faith. The essence of faith, the things uh, that we hope for, the reality uh, of hope for, uh, once we uh, grapple with this on everyday basis. Uh, some of us end up 
angry with God. Some of us get mad with God. Some of us get disappointed with God. Uh, but hold on. Hold on. Only me. Yeah. All things are possible. Yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.